is the music of Final Fantasy. Exploit the compositions of Nobuo Oimatsu. Yes! yes. Lovely. Lovely. Well, guys, my name is Dan Lopatka. I'm from Chicago. I'm a professional bassist in Chicago. And uh, not only do I do professional bass, but I also do composing for video games. Right now, I work for a company called Pickle Feet Games. They're out, it's a great name. <laughs> They're out of Seattle. And before them, I was working for Vigilant Addiction Studios. And with them, we put together this game called Adventurer Manager. It's a bit of a tongue twister, right? Adventurer Manager. It was a Steam Greenlight game. Maybe somebody has come across it. Nope. That's it. <laughs> oh, 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 hey. Good guys, good people. All right. So, <laughs> so I worked on Adventurer Manager, and I was the composer for that. Now, as you guys can probably already tell, this was this was an 8-bit title, right? Uh, I mean, you could, you know, look at the look at the logo, right? And to me, when I started working on it, it was very reminiscent to Final Fantasy. We had these big monsters like this, and it was essentially a dungeon crawler where we would take parties. Of four adventurers, you know, a mage, a knight, and so on and so forth, go through these dungeons, collect loot, kill monsters, right? It looks kind of like Final Fantasy, right? A little bit? Not as good at graphics, but a little bit like Final Fantasy. So, for me, that's, that, was the, that was what I wanted it to sound like, because it reminded me of that. I wanted to have that nostalgic kind of thing going on. So, in doing that, I had to ask myself a couple of big questions. A couple of big questions. <coughs> Two big questions. Number one, what compositional devices does Uematsu use to create setting? Create setting. So when I say setting, I like to think of it as from macro to micro. Macro setting being like the general mood of the game, or the overworld of the game. And that mood sets, go down a little bit to the, uh, you know, going down to micro, so specific locations, and how those locations are going to sound being in that overworld. And then beyond that, interactions, battles, how do battles and, and how do characters relate to one another in that, in that general overworld, right? Does that make sense? Are you clear? Good? So, that was the first question. And to me, the answer to that was melody, harmony, and rhythm. How does Nobuo Oimatsu use melody, harmony, and rhythm to create setting? Second big question. Why doesn't the music get boring? And I think this is something we all have to look at, especially as composers, at looking back at that older, that older music. Because those tunes are like a minute long, right? They're like a minute long, like tops, maybe a minute and a half. And so we hear them over and over and over. So why don't they get bored? You guys know as well as I do. If you get stuck in a, in a certain dungeon or area for like a day, <coughs> you're going to hear those tunes over and over and over. And, you know, the compo part of the composer's job is so that you don't kill yourself, right? <laughs> so... so we have to think about that. So for me, that relates to arrangement and form. How do we, how do we arrange the music? And, and obviously, I'm sure some of you are thinking it, there's probably some overlap there, right? Because, you know, having a catchy melody definitely helps it not become boring. But for, for purposes of, of this discussion, we're going to divide those two up. Fair enough? Okay. All right, cool. Okay. So, starting with question number one, talking about melody, harmony, and rhythm. Melody and harmony specifically. Diatonic melodies and harmony. Now, can anybody here? There's so many. I was not expecting all of you guys. I was thinking, like, the first couple rows, I was going to, like, get up and talk to all of you. Now i got to be up here. This is what you've made me do. <laughs> okay. So... Can anybody tell me what diatonic means? Does anybody have a good definition 
of diatonic, or even a not so good definition. Anybody know what that means? Yes, sir. In the back. All the notes of the melody and the chords remain within the scale or scale collection. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That is a wonderful definition. So that's essentially what I said. Uh, usually only notes found in the prevailing musical scale. So no altered notes. So, for example, if we were the key of C major, the notes of the C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And we would only see those notes in the melody and in the harmony. So if we have the harmony, the chords, the chords are harmony. So that's, if I'm using the word harmony, I generally mean chords, for those of you who aren't as hip to music theory and all that. So we have C major, D minor, D minor, F major, G major, A minor, D diminished. So what I think about diatonic melodies and harmony, I think about familiarity. Uh, familiarity being that in our world, in our, our actual world, our world, if you listen to, if like we turned on the radio right now, basically everything we would hear would be diatonic. We wouldn't hear anything that's non-diatonic or a word that we're going to learn in just a bit, chromatic. Has anybody heard that word, chromatic? Has? Okay, a couple. This is great. This is great. Okay, a few people, a few people. This is great. So, I, I think of diatonic stuff as familiar. It's of our world. So, what we're going to listen to from Final Fantasy VI. Woo! Yeah. Is, yeah. Seriously. All right. All right. Before we even listen to this, before we even listen to this, let's just look. Those chords that we have here. Now, by the way, I, for those of you who know this recording, I wrote it a half step higher, just so we could make the point of it being in C major and not in G sharp. Okay? Cool? Cool? Fair? Alright. So, all right. cool. so, so, if we look at just the chords, that's, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the A minor, E minor, A minor, E minor, the stuff that's above the staff, those are all the chords we just discussed, right? We don't see anything that deviates from what we, we just talked about. And with the melody, we don't see anything that's an altered tone. Everything, we don't see any sharps or flats or natural sides or anything next to any of the notes that would alter the note. Yeah? Clear? So let's listen to Terrace theme. which we're going to get to in, in uh, just a moment. So everything is completely diatonic, no altered notes. So let's move on to chromatic melodies and harmony. So does anybody know what chromatic means? I kind of gave it away, but maybe, maybe somebody has a different definition. Uh, yes, you, sir. Yeah. Uh, chromatic means using any of the 12 common notes in the 12-tone scale. Yeah, I could. I, that that would work for me. That would work for me. Anybody else? Anybody else have another definition? Or is that pretty much we all in agreement? Yeah, okay, fine. I'll buy that. So chromatic is using notes that do not belong to the diatonic scale in which the piece was written. So if we go back to our example being in C major, like the last one, if the piece is in C major but there were what we call accidental, sharps or flats, so if we had like a D flat or an F sharp or something like that, that would be chromatic. 
And like how diatonic was familiar of our world, this is more sounds more foreign to us. Because we don't really hear, I mean, obviously, if we're listening to video game music, we do hear a lot of chromatic stuff. But like just in our general world, in our general world world, we're not going to hear very much chromatic music. Like, I, I, you're not going to hear much chromaticism on a Taylor Swift recording. Like, I hate to tell you that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So, our example for this one is going to be our good friend, the Moogle theme, Final Fantasy V. So, before we jump into listening to it, what I want you to, what I really want you to pay attention to is, is a couple things. So, first I'll just look at it. In the second bar, where we have the D flat seven flat five, uh, we have we have three flat notes right in a row. We have an E flat, a D flat, and a C flat. So already we know just without even hearing it, this is going to sound much different than than diatonic music because there are flats and sharps involved. So we jump down to in the, in the fourth bar, we see the same thing, basically the same idea as the second bar. Uh, if you looked at in the B section, there's some more of that going on. We see a couple accidentals uh, in the first bar of the B section, of the second bar of the B section. Uh, what I want you to pay attention to, though, is when we get to that that fourth bar of the B section, the one that has A flat on top going to a, moving to a B major chord, uh, it, that's going to really take us out of the realm of like sounding normal, out of the realm of, of familiar. So what I think is cool about this, if we listen to the first measure of the A section, it's going to sound all pretty in. But as soon as we hit that D flat 7 flat 5 chord, and we hit those chromatic notes descending, it, it just sounds out. It sounds so strange, which is perfect for Googles, right? That's perfect. So let's listen to that and see how this works for us. Okay, here's that second part. kind of takes us out of that familiar realm. No. Yeah? That make any sense? Seeing the difference between those two? Then my job is done. I'll get out of here. All right. Cool. So, uh, moving away from, moving away from uh, uh, diatonic and chromatic, we're going to go into modality. Ooh. Does anybody know what, what does anybody know what a mode is? Oh, there's a couple hands. All right. All right. We, we heard from you. <laughs> How about next to you? You, sir. Yes? So, a mode is a... It's, it's a scale, so if you have a key, and you start on a note that's not the center of the key. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So, so you have a scale, and you're starting on a note that's not the, the like, the, what we call the tonic. Of that key. So, for example, if we're in C major, C is the note that all the other notes push towards. C is the tonic. C is home base, right? So, what happens is, in both is when we change the tonic to a different note in the scale. So, an example of this would be if we started, if we had the C major scale, so the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, but instead of having C be our tonic, we would have like D be the tonic. And if D was the tonic, we'd be in what's called Dorian. Or if E was the tonic, it would be Phrygian, or F, Lydian, or G, Vixilidian, or A, and so on and so forth. That doesn't matter as much. You just have to know that this is a thing. It's often analyzed. Uh, people will often not look at it that way. I like that way of looking at it. I think that's the clearer way to look at it. But a lot of people will look at it as in relation to a major or a minor key. So for example, Dorian would be a minor scale, but with a raised sixth. And a lot of guitarists do this. Are there any guitarists here? 
couple. Have you guys heard, have heard of this way to look at it instead, just like raising or flattening something? Yeah, so same thing. So if we were in Dory, it would be like a minor scale with a raised six, or Lydia, a major scale with a raised four. And that's all good. So now a good example that I like to, I like to look at is the Chocobo theme. <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm getting all of them. I'm getting all the things. This is great. I'm playing only the hits. Alright, so. Look at the Chocobo theme. We're going to be looking at the Final Fantasy III version. Uh, that's like the first time we hear it in its entirety. Uh, uh, with two sections. And so what I want you to pay attention to is, is if you remember from the first example, we were in, when we were in C major, we had no sharps, no flats in the keys of each other. And here again, we have no sharps and no flats. So, we have the same key as C major, but G is our tonic number. G is our home base. And you can see that we start on a G chord and all of that, and we see a lot of G. G is our home base here. So what's interesting is the A section is in G mixolydian. G mixolydian, the fifth mode of, uh, well, the fifth mode of general, fifth mode of C major. Uh, and so what I want you to pay attention to is, especially in this last bar, I wish I could point, point to this, but this last bar in the A section, uh, the melody goes up to an F on the top line. You guys, how many of you read music? A couple? So? Fair amount? Okay. So, those of you who can't read music, that's okay. But be listening for that last note of the A section, because it's going to sound... You probably have heard this song a number of times, so it might not sound as like out to you, but I assure you, it's it sounds it's going to be a little bit out. So the cool thing that is when we hit the B section, where we start seeing uh, F sharps and stuff like we start seeing you know sharp notes. So we have an F sharp in many of those places. So that would be what would that be? Starts with a C. Chromatic. All right, but. We can, it just always depends on how you want to analyze it, because we're, we're kind of changing key right here to G major. Well, we're definitely changing key to G major. So we have an F sharp going, going throughout, and any time we see an F during the B section, minus the chord the, at the, on the last line, uh, we're going to see it sharp. So we're essentially in, in G major for the second half. So let's listen to this. And at, at the A section, I want you to pay attention, especially to that last note, and hear how that sounds a little bit out, and then transitioning it to the B section where it's going to sound more like familiar. Okay? Here we go. Here we go. Hey. So if you guys notice when we hit that F chord, da -da 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 like right before right before the ending, that kind of came out of nowhere. That sounded like more foreign than what we just had. Let's, let's just, that was a short example. Let's just hear that one more time. So even if you don't know like the notes and the chords and all that stuff, you can still hear it emotionally. You can still focus on like how it makes you feel and if it if it sounds like it's your your ear your, your uh you're being tugged in a different, like, more unfamiliar direction. So let's hear that just one more time. So here. So that F. It's kind of like a raised eyebrow moment. It's all, it's all straightforward. Right there. Right there. Okay, I see some nods. This is good. This is good. So, we'll move on. Modal interchange. Anybody? Anybody? Does anybody know? It's okay if you don't. Just... Sir, you do? What, what is it? It's when a song, a piece changes mode in the middle of, you know. That's, okay, that's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> no, that's fair. I know what you're saying. I know what you mean. So the way I like to think of it, or another name for it, maybe you guys have heard this name, 
Borrowed chords. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So modal interchange. It's, I mean, that's that's such a that's such a college. That's an academic. Thing. Okay. Borrowed chords are a little bit straight more, more straightforward. So use it's borrowed chords is using harmony that originates from the parallel major or minor scale of the one in which the piece is written. So even that's I mean okay that's a little more convoluted anyway. So how how would we bring it bring it down a little bit more? So if the piece is in C major, but we're using chords that are in C minor, that make more, a little more sense? Yeah. yeah? Okay. That's, a, that's, I think, a little more straightforward. So the chords may also come from parallel modes, just like we were talking about earlier, modes. You could say, okay, well, I'm in C major, but I'm going to use this chord that's from C Dorian, and that could be cool. Or I'm going to use this chord from C Phrygian, or whatever. And it could be a, just a completely different sound. So, what we're going to listen to here is the Final Fantasy VII main thing. Now, does anybody know, just looking at it, what, what thing, first thing I want you to notice is that the melody, if we just look at the notes of the melody, there is no, there's no chromaticism, no chromatic notes, right? They're all diatonic. We don't see any, any, any like, altering of those notes in the melody, Okay? So can anybody tell, anybody tell you what chords in here do not belong to E major? You, sir. This is kind of a guess just based on remembering what it sounds like. Sure. But the second bar uh, is... The C sharp minor? Yeah, the seventh is. bar? C sharp minor is actually in the key of E major. That's going to sound pretty straight, pretty straight short. Uh, uh, you, sir. It's the C and the D sound. Yeah, exactly. So we have a, in the fourth bar, we have a C major and a D7. And we also have a D major chord in the uh, second to the last bar of the, of the third line. So everybody see those? Okay, so that's, those are the moments that I really want you to pay attention to because, again, even if you don't know like fully what we're talking about, it, there's, it's, they're going to pop out to you. The cool thing I think about here is that if we look at the melody in the second, excuse me, the third and fourth bar, the first line, and we also look at it in the second line, it's the same melody. So we get two, we get to hear two different ways of how that can be harmonized, of how we can have the chords relate to that melody. And where originally we have a C and a D, which is really going to pop out, we then have an A, which isn't going to pop out as much. That's going to sound pretty play James. So let's listen to that and see if we can catch those things. Okay, here we go. All straightforward. Okay. Do you guys feel that? Did you guys feel that? Oh, yeah. It's it's it, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so so that's the thing. It's an emo- it's an emotional thing that happens right there. And it, what I think is so cool is that he first harmonizes that. Per- yeah, excuse me. He first harmonizes it with this modal interchange or bar of chords that sound kind of out. They sound, they they change your whole emotional reaction to the music, and then when he does it again, he just keeps it very straightforward. So, that's, to me, that's, that's amazing. That's so cool, guys. The chords, C, C major and D7, come from E minor. So we're in E major, and those two chords come from E minor. Make sense? All good? Clear? Cool. Alright, so when it comes to when it comes to major and minor, like looking at setting, I, I like to think of it as beyond major and minor, when we talk about Final Fantasy music, beyond major and minor. Because it's the familiar versus the beyond. So we talked about diatonic being familiar, right? So our world is familiar, mostly diatonic melodies and harmonies, versus the world of Final Fantasy, which is mostly chromatic and modal melodies, just like we've looked at. Now the cool thing about what Uematsu does here is that he uses this relationship to tell us how we should connect with the characters, locations, and so on. And so, 
I want to take us back to, to Terra's theme. Now, remember I said that Terra's theme was a completely diatonic melody. It was completely diatonic. The melody is completely diatonic. The chords are completely diatonic. The whole two. Okay. That is the only completely diatonic song in Final Fantasy VI. Guys, that is the only <laughs> completely diatonic song. Out of 60 plus songs, pieces, whatever you want to call it. I know that there's a definition, but... Out of 60... One is completely diatonic. And think about that. Think about what that means. So, do, do, do you guys know who Tara is? Does anybody know who Tara? Okay. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you all met my fiance, Tara? Good <laughs> job. <laughs> okay. So, but guys, think about that. So she is the main character who we are supposed to most relate with. Who we are supposed to be most familiar with. And she is the only one with a completely diatonic melody and harmony. And we are supposed to be familiar. It's guys! <laughs> I posted this on Facebook as soon as I heard it, and I was like, oh my god! This is amazing! <laughs> they know. They're friends with me on Facebook. They saw it. <laughs> but I mean, think, the cool thing about it is that, not only that, but it, it's militaristic. There's this, there's this like military kind of drum beat in it. It, the melody sounds very like kind of old western. It's it's heroic, but because it kind of goes between major and minor, there, there's there's sort of this unsure feeling about it. Guys, that is a portrait of Tara. That is a musical portrait of Tara. That's incredible. <laughs> oh my <yeah>, God! <laughs> Jesus, I was freaking out. <laughs> I did that. Okay, so. So, but we got the rhythm. <laughs> Guys, nerding out about music theory is like the funnest thing ever. <laughs> and to do it in front of like an audience is like obnoxious. Okay. So <laughs> okay. So, so okay. So rhythm. One of the big rhythmic things that uh, Uematsu uses is syncopation. Who can tell you what syncopation is? Anybody? It's a cave cat. It's like a. Oh, okay, no, sure, yes, please. It's like when the rhythm moves like on and off the beat. Okay, yeah, when the rhythm moves on and off the beat. So, a simple way to think about it, syncopation is accenting what are typically weak beats. Accenting what are typically weak beats. So, if we could see, it, oh, oh, that's too funny. You can hear my stop. Okay, great, wonderful. Okay. So, if we we're in like 4-4 four, four time, we're, we're in common time that like every pop and rock song ever is in. Not every one. I know there are exceptions. <laughs> okay. All right. So, if we were in 4-4, four, four, like if this was our beat, the strong beats, the strong beats are 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Get your foot. Okay. Anyway. So, what? <laughs> Okay, so what they're one, two, three, and four. Those are the strong those are the strong beats. And when we accent the what are typically the weak beats, when we accent what are typically the weak beats, we have syncopation. So for example, if we're we're clapping two, three, four, those are all strong beats. But if we have if we're here and we're clapping out the weak beats, and 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 right. So check this out. What's cool about that is they have two different kind of like motions. If we're going one, two, three, four, all weak, or excuse me, all strong beats, it has kind of a like a downward motion to it. One, two, three, four, right? Versus it has this kind of upward bouncing motion to it. So we add syncopation, we now have this like bounce instead of having just one, two, three, four, just hitting all the strong beats. So the thing I like to think about is the disco groove, right? So if we think about a disco groove, we have the bass drum, you can see at the bottom, and it's on all four beats. The snare drum is on beats two and four. And then the hi-hat, the hi-hat is on all the ands. So if we just had <coughs> crap, boom, crap. Crap, 
Like that's cool. That has this like pushing forward have motion, but then we have those upbeats. That syncopation is what pushes the music forward, right? Guys, can, 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 can we agree? Cool. Yes. Woo! Woo! Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, the, probably the probably the most well-known moment of syncopation is the battle rhythm. So, some people kind of know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. So people know what's up. So what we have here is a syncopated ostinato. Ooh, sexy. All right, so, <laughs> ostinato. Does anybody know what an ostinato is? Anybody know this term? It's a really, it's really straightforward, but not necessarily people know that name. Ostinato. Yes? Is that like playing a, playing a chord one note at a time? That'd be an arpeggio. Oh. Anybody else? Ostinato? Yes, sir. It's a feature of the music that repeats over and over. Yeah, exactly. A feature of the music that repeats over and over again. So if we have like a repeated bass line that happens throughout a piece, that could be an ostinato. Or if we have a repeated rhythm, like we're going to talk about, that repeats throughout the piece, that's an ostinato. So the one that we see is a syncopated ostinato. And just looking at it can be a little little bit confusing, especially for those of you who don't read music. It just or if you if you've read a little bit of music, this might look like, oh man, what the hell he's asking us to do. Okay. But the way I like to think of it is that if we're counting eighth notes, it's basically four groupings of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then two groupings of two. One, two, one, two. So that would sound like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Oh, and now it's, now it's, <laughs> now you know what's up, right? Okay. So, the cool thing about this, what we're going to listen to, we're going to listen to uh, some Final Fantasy X. Yes! Yes! Okay. So, so, we're going to listen to some Final Fantasy X. And the cool thing is that it being in four, it being in four, is, you know, as I said before, all, like, basically every pop music you hear, piece of pop music you hear is going to be uh, in four. Uh, so it, it keeps, the four keeps it familiar, comfortable. There's this rocking drum group, right? But the syncopation keeps it driving forward and also makes it off-kilter enough that it throws off our sense of balance. Okay? So, so let's, give, let's give this a little bit of a listen. I think it starts at the here. And what's cool about here is you're going to hear, listen to, uh, excuse me, what's cool about this is you're going to hear, yeah, I know, can't talk. What's cool about this is you're going to hear the melody play this over and over and over. And when it's not playing it, you're going to hear the drums take over and play this rhythm also. So it's kind of like this call and response thing going back and forth. So let's check this out. Okay, here it comes. So the cool thing about this is that it's used throughout every Final Fantasy game. If you guys haven't played 10, I'm sure you've probably heard that rhythm at one point or another. Yeah? Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. We'll come back to that in a bit. So uh, our next big question, that basically closes out our first question, what we could do to make to make the music sound like Final Fantasy. Uh, but now, like, first, uh, regarding melody, harmony, or rhythm. Uh, but here, with uh, form and arrangement, this is why the music doesn't get boring. So, our first thing is form. And with all the pieces we heard, if you remember, we kind of looked at, there was an A section and a B section. 
for basically everything we listen to. And so these are contrasting sections. They're two different sections. And because if we have two different, at least two different sections, it adds variety to the music and makes it just more interesting to listen to. If we just heard the same section over and over and over, it'd be kind of boring. Like, for example, uh, if you guys listen back to, like, the, I think the first instance of the Chocobo theme is in number two. Yeah? I think so? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, thank you, Zelda. Um, <laughs> Um, in that one, there wasn't a B section, it's just the A section, over and over and over and over. So there's no variety, it's just the same thing over and over and over. So it can get a little bit boring, but having that second section just makes it more interesting. So that arrangement is another big thing. And changing texture, more specifically, changing texture. How do we change texture? Well, he uses a lot of different techniques. Uh, three I want to look at, though are distributing the melody between different instruments, so not just having like a violin play the melody the whole time. Because just like hearing the same section over and over, that could get a little bit boring. Uh, adding harmony, uh, so earlier I said harmony is chords, and, but what I've referred to here is having the, instead of like, you know, you hear a choir, two people are singing together and they're singing harmony, yes? We know about this? Cool. So that's what I'm referring to, having, uh, adding harmony to the melody, and then also changing the accompaniment. So, like sometimes there'll be drums playing, sometimes you take away the drums so that there's no percussion playing underneath it, uh, and, and, and other techniques. So what we're going to look at here, but this is gonna be box theme for Final Fantasy VI. And uh, what I want you to take note of is I, I highlighted what instrument is playing each measure. And you'll see that he constantly is, is adding variety. He's going for the A section, he's going back and forth between oboe and tuba. And then the B section, he's doing trumpet, oboe, trumpet again, then a trumpet duo. He's adding harmony at the very end. So, excuse me, let's take a listen to that. Here we go. Jumping into our, our last section here. So the what I want to look at is uh, is a listening guide. I, I wrote out a listening guide for you guys for a, for a specific two. That who's all played Final Fantasy fifteen? Okay, yeah, fair amount of people. All right, wonderful, wonderful. I have two. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? Okay. So what I think is really cool, what I think is really cool about about the music of Final Fantasy is that it's uh, it's become like an integral part of the series. It it has to sound a certain way. So even though Uematsu didn't write Final Fantasy XV, we can still hear his influence in all of the more current games. I think he stopped writing about Ted. I, I, he, he did Ted, like a little bit of Ted. But I think he, after Ted, I think he was basically out. Right? He did some of the Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. He did, he did some, but he didn't do like the entire game. He didn't do the entire game. So we're going to listen to Stand Your Ground. And uh, uh, I, I wrote this uh, somewhat lengthy, <coughs> somewhat lengthy, Listing guide. So I'll let you guys. Uh, um, <laughs> I'll let you guys take a quick look at it. But I tried to highlight some of the things that I think are are important, um, such as we're going to hear the battle rhythm a lot. We're going to hear uh, some chromatic harmony and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, 
uh, the, 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 the second one, the, the chromatic harmony it, it, with the A flat at the bass. So this is a G minor, for those of you who, who are hip to that stuff. This is a G minor, and it moves up to an A flat at the bass, which is not in the key of G minor, so it's chromatic. It's, it, it's a very cool, like, emotional thing that happens right there. Uh, the melody is diatonic. There's a lot of texture changes. Um, uh, and there's a bar chord and later in there's so there's a lot of cool stuff. So try to follow along. I'm gonna tr I think I'm gonna play it twice uh, just so everybody can hear hear it. If you don't catch something, try to hear it on the second time. So let's let's give this a listen and and see if we can get this. <laughs> It's like, I don't know if they're going to get everything the first time. I don't know. So let's, let's hear it one more time. So if you want, you can take this home. Okay. So if you want to write something that sounds like a Buwaibatsu, or, or just use these in your own writing, uh, step one, melody. So getting your getting the sound of modal and chromatic stuff is 
supremely helpful. And that could be listening to video game music or it could be listening to stuff that's not remotely video game music. So, you know, 20th century classical stuff or things like that. There's stuff that's very chromatic or modal. Just get to get that sound in your ear. Uh, from there, writing a melody using only the notes of a specific mode. Pick a mode like Dorian or, or you know, Mixolydian or whatever and just try to write a melody that only uses those notes. Uh, lastly, try to take a diatonic melody uh, and then alter the notes, alter some, a couple of the notes and make it chromatic or add some sort of chromatic walk-ups to notes, things like that. Just try to add chromaticism into something that you're already doing. Uh, with harmony, either take a melody you've already written or this new melody that you write and try to harmonize it with at least one chord from a parallel mode. So using modal interchange or borrowed chords. And lastly, with rhythm, creating a syncopated ostinato using groupings of three and two in four, four times. So remember we used, we, uh, for the battle rhythm, it was four groupings of three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then two groupings of two, one, two, one, two. Now that equals 16, right? So that's over two measures, and so there would be eight eighth notes in each measure. So equaling up to 16, it's going to let us stay at four. And you could change time signatures if you wanted to, but just to keep it simple, stay at four. Well, you could do something like uh, two, three, two, three, 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 or something like that. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or something like that. You or the possibilities are. Not quite endless, but there's a lot. A lot of good possibilities. And if you do do this, guys, I would love it if you sent me it, because I would, I would really love to hear anything you guys do. So, or if there's anything you're working on currently, I, I would love to hear it. So, uh, if you hit me up on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that, I'm at music on the d -Lo. Music on the d -Lo. My last name is Lopatka. My first name is Dad. d -Lo. Okay, all right. <laughs> Yeah, I know, it's clever, right? <laughs> so, so uh, music out of the D-Lo. Now, uh, uh, if, you guys, uh, if you guys have any questions, I know we're, we're still about seven minutes before the end, so if there's anybody who has like, a question, I'd be happy to answer as, as well as I can. Yeah, sir, way in the back. Do you have an example of what you wrote for your game? <laughs> <laughs> I might. <laughs> I, I, now, I'm not promising anything. I might. <laughs> so, in the meantime, are there any other questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, is there any way we could access the recording of, of the presentation? Or? Oh, well, my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so there will be, um, I'm going to post, so if you guys are on YouTube, anybody on YouTube? Okay, so if you look me up, uh, if you look up either my name, or uh, music on the D-Lo on YouTube. You can follow me. I have le bass lessons out there and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, and I, this will go up there. Uh, so so I'll put it up there. I think uh, Bages is also, yeah, Bages I think is filming it. So this will be, uh, I don't know where they will have access to it, but somewhere they will, I'll, you know. But if you follow me, you'll find out. So follow me on Instagram or Twitter and all that stuff and, and I'll definitely let you know. Uh, Yes, sir. How did you get to the point where you could just listen to this music and understand all of that? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of it, it, it it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of listening and a lot of singing. Sing, singing what you play and playing what you sing. That helps immensely. So a lot of people, especially, you know, guitarists, or really any instrumentalist, any instrumentalist will learn, like, the modes on their instrument, and they'll know how to play them, and they, that's great. But if you don't understand how that actually sounds, you can just you just know the shape of it under your fingers. That's not going to do much for you. So it's a matter of of then taking that and and singing singing what you play and playing what you sing. Because if you can do that, then you can start hearing that elsewhere. You're, if you can sing it, you've internalized it. Does that make sense? You know, it's like it's like uh, if you know if you understand a word like some vocabulary word, you should be you should be able to give an explanation of it, and you'll know it when you hear it. And if you don't know it too well, 
That's like, uh, I could write it down. You know, Google could tell me what it means, right? <laughs> so, oh, does that answer it? Cool. Uh, 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 you, you, sir. Did you hear the Final Fantasy like prelude theme in 12 to 18 seconds of the Final Fantasy 15 uh, piece? Um. The scales. Yeah. My fiance is nodding her head. She's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing it? Oh, they are? Okay. No, yeah, you're okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll buy that. Sure. Go on. <laughs> okay. um, you, sir. Um, what advice do you have about creating melodies in the first place? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> that's... Uh, listening to, you know, influences do a lot for you. Influences do a lot, and a lot of and listening does a lot. Listen to a lot of good melodies, play those melodies, sing those melodies, start to figure out like even just shapes of melodies. You know, like usually there's some sort of focal point. There's some there's some high note that everything leads up to. Sometimes over the course of a phrase, sometimes over the course of an entire piece, and just understand just understanding like what makes a good melody. Like, why, I, I think the best melody ever written is, uh, is uh, uh, Beethoven's uh, I love that melody so much. That's an incredible melody. But yeah, I mean, listening, that's, that's a huge amount of it. Yes? Um, on the flip side, how do you avoid stumbling upon an already existing melody? Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, because, I, no, I, I wouldn't. Because, because uh, basically everything's out there. You know, and it, but we, we all we all we have twelve notes. You know, and we're bound to stumble onto to a lot of the same ideas. But it's how you use those ideas. I mean, I hear uh, in pop music, I hear the same melodies a lot, and and not just I'm not just talking about chord progressions. At all. I'm talking about like the same melody, but the rhythm was changed slightly. Uh, uh, I have a whole list of them in my phone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, uh, it, 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 I wouldn't worry about it. it, it, it you're you're going to be original because you're you. We all we all use the same words, right? But we don't we don't sound like each other. You know what I mean? So, and because I sound different than you guys because we're different people and we've had different influences. So, <clears throat> yes, sir. So you talk mostly about arrangement and tonality in this panel. Once the synths on the, NES, or, uh, on the SNES started sounding more like actual instruments, uh -huh. do you find that Uematsu ever floated towards specific instruments? Or did he mostly go across the orchestral and rock? I think, I think he, I, it sounds to me like he went across the board, and I think he, and I think that he partially did that because he had access to that then. I think that that if, if if I was a you know if I if I was in that situation, all of a sudden it gets to this new new system, and I have access to all these different sounds. Boy, howdy! I'm going to use them all. You know? <laughs> <laughs> At least try. You had a question, or, or unless it was already answered. No, no, it was not. Um, kind of a little less technical, but of all the Final Fantasies that Kuzumasa did, uh -huh. is there one in particular that you think inspired? I mean, I. To, full disclosure, I was only going to talk about six for, for a while. <laughs> like, and then, and then, if I, then Ari looked at me and she's like, you, you can't do that. <laughs> so, and so I, I, I changed it to be a little bit of everything. Now, I think we're, I think we're at the end. Yes? So we're, if we're, we'll tread, if you guys want to talk and hang, I'll be happy to hang. If you guys want to hang. <laughs> so, <laughs>